by the way, before we start, I saw two cockroaches uh, back to back, like ass to ass, crawling. And I looked at it and I stared at it from the wall. And I thought it was like a millipede in the wall, but it wasn't. It was like one giant cockroach. It, it was like the beast and it looked like vile. they were vile. It looked like it was confused as to why it was alive. Because it looks like they couldn't. <laughs> they were moving in sync. And it was the most... Bes- I felt like the devil was looking at me when I was watching these two cockroaches together. It was terrible. Hello, everyone, and welcome um. to Japuni. <laughs> <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to Jumpudi Jams or Jupuchi Jams or some something jams. I'm not hundred percent sure how to pronounce Jumpudi. I'm how here to with pronounce it. I don't know how to pronounce it. We don't know how to pronounce it. Jump jump booty is what I'm gonna call it. Jump booty? Jump jump booty heroes. B-O-O-T-Y. Jump. Exactly. And this is Jabuti Jam and I'm here with Zenrot, aka Zenrot. Hello oh, everybody. Best known currently for Shonen and Chill, the amazing uh, manga podcast that you can watch after this if you if you love hearing Zen talk about Shonen Jump things. Uh, I have to introduce yeah, you again. Go, go watch that. It's yeah. good. I have to introduce you again because it's literally been months since we've ever recorded something together. It's I know, been a, man. It was, we never play the same things. We never do. The last thing was uh, Star Smash, and since then, Star Smash has turned into a completely different game. But we're here with Jumpudi Heroes. We have a huge uh, backstory because we used to play Or Collection, and we used to have a podcast called Or, or <laughs> Short and Or Smorgasbord. Um, and then, unfortunately, Short and Or died on us. And Jumpudi was actually in, around in a this brutal story. way. Oh, it, it died in a terrible way. Horrible way. So much so that it put me off of Shonen Jump games, which was unfortunate because Jumpudi was literally there at the time. I just was not ready to actually move on to it. And uh, funny enough, you eventually got into it. And that was the catalyst for me to actually start it. And I've been enjoying it a whole bunch. So now we're bringing back... Oh, <laughs> we're bringing back basically a, a, the actual child of Shonen or Smorgasbord, except for now it's completely different. It's now in a three book. Not even kind of the same. Not even close to the same, but it is going to be the same topics of us saying, how come this Shonen Jump character is in this game? <laughs> Probably. That's going to be every week. I'm just going to be like, did you know that Gojo is not in this game yet? <laughs> I can't believe Gojo's not in this game yet, to be honest. I know, me too. You'd think they'd have cashed in on it by now. No, apparently not. Slam Dunk is also not in it. My boys in Slam Dunk have not made it in. Maybe they don't know how to put in awesome dunks as attacks yet, but I assume they're going to get to it eventually. They so, yeah, absolutely we're... do, because Ryo Takise from Kuroko's Basketball, his super is an awesome dunk. Oh, God damn it! then why is it Slam Dunk in it? That's a... Now I'm really annoyed. I thought it was... That, that's to... actually been a very, like heavily debated topic among players of this game and some people think that it might be like because the author no longer is with jump mm. the same way or something or like or no the author is but slam dunk isn't or something yeah something it's, happened there's something after weird slam with dunk. slam dunk and the slam dunk's author like and jump yeah because after slam dunk finished he didn't do a jump manga he did like a he did like a handy capable like basketball story next and that wasn't on jump i remember because i looked it up i was like wow i figured the jump would kind of go for the guy who taught japan to love basketball you know get his next story and jump but something weird happened with that relationship yeah it, it didn't pan out and so people think that might be why it's not in um because it's been a long time and it's not like they're holding it for you know oh shit the new slam dunk anime like it you know so Nobody really knows why. It's yeah. the same with, like, Shaman King is never going to be in because of the all the stuff with that and, like, the rights yeah. to it aren't Shonen Jump anymore or whatever. Um, forget, same yeah, thing right. is what people assume for Slam Dunk. Yeah, that's weird. It's not a Disney situation where they own absolutely everything under their umbrella. <laughs> They're yeah, very much exactly. early Marvel stuff where it's like, oh, yeah, Spider-Man would be cool to have in this, but uh, Spider-Man is off in Sony and Sony refuses to give him up. 
And to be fair, Sony still refuses to give them up. They're just playing ball now. Uh, I would so you... Spider Man. If I had the movie rights to Spider Man, I would always keep the movie rights to fucking Spider Man. Oh yeah, no, for sure. Like if I was One Piece and I was, <laughs> and I could force Shota Jump to give me money for them, to, so I can put Luffy in punching a new man, I would gladly do it. But one hundred percent of the time. Oh yeah, give me that sweet money. I'm making it. So yeah, this show we're gonna be talking about the game pretty extensively. We are also going to always go off the track because we are both just in love with Shonen Jump things. It's like unstoppable for us. We can't stop. We can't yeah, help this, ourselves. It's, it's, this is gonna be a very disorganized show. So y'all get ready for that. <laughs> yeah, if you have never experienced something with us, uh, if you've never been, if you've never watched To Be Released, the greatest Dokkan podcast ever <laughs> that the is not currently going. But I stand by that statement. Um, it gets a little bit off the wall. But we're going to try and start with a little bit of order right here at the beginning. So let's actually talk about what's coming up for Jambuti. Because it's something so, that I greatly like. Yeah, you uh, like it a lot more than me. But I'm actually excited about it because it's the one character from this show that I really like. Perfect. Uh, so the 100 celebration just ended. It's actually, the game is in maintenance as we're recording this to end mm -hmm. the 100 celebration. Uh, and we're moving on to a One Piece feature event, which is the the worst generation. Yes. And then I, I don't know what that means because I don't watch One Piece. But then mm. the limited character is the uh, a the the Wano Zoro yeah. Zoro Juro something Zoro Juro. That's it. Yeah, he is the new limited character. There's only one, which is kind of surprising because for the past few events there's been a lot of them. There's been like at least mm. two. Uh, in you all have of to them. Be holding. I'm actually kind of surprised of the Lucy they picked for worst generation. That makes me kind of feel like they're going to use next because they this is not Wano Luffy that they have on here. But continue on. Yeah, it's just people are are generally surprised that uh, that Zoro Zoro is the only limited. Uh, they might not be doing it just because Luffy already has like 15 limiteds in this fucking game. Mm. Uh, so Goku maybe they're effect. just like give him a break. Yeah, the Goku effect, big time. Um, so maybe they're just not not going with it. Uh, I don't know. But only one limited this time, which is kind of nice, because the, the double limited events can get a little hectic sometimes. Um, oh, yeah, but it's, for sure. Yeah, well, you know, you're trying to get two limiteds at a time and stuff like that. But it looks to be a good event. we got a lot of new characters. we got uh, a Kaido Unity Battle coming. So for those of you who don't know what Unity Battle is, it's the Mecha Frieza fight that you just did, like, not mm -hmm. that long ago. Um, yeah, then we got the Kaido one coming. It's bringing a new legend summon, which is called Pirate Alliance from One Piece, which just has the three units that are in the banners, whose names I don't know. Uh, if I could see the uh, banner, I could tell you what it is. Let's, let's see. It's Scratchman Apu. Okay, yeah, Scratchman Apu. Basil Hawkins. And he's this kid. Oh, and Kid really they are okay. on the uh, they're, well. They're on the Legend Summon. They're like that's the scene that it's showing is is that scene. Uh, it looks like the Basil Hawkins dude is a catastrophe event. So he's one of the ones that goes up to 160k difficulty and has like the aura, the special aura effect you can get. Uh, we've got just a regular class event, which is oh god, Uro 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 Weird Angel Man, yeah. Weird giant ripped as shit angel man. Yeah. Uh, he's <laughs> another freebie. That, that panel. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, that's a brutal. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, that's a brutal panel right there. Uh, and then Jewelry Bonnie. He's another uh, farmable coming out of this. Love Jewelry Bonnie. Absolutely love her. Glad Crash to see that. Who <laughs> is a freebie. On the exact opposite end. Fuck Scratch Man. Who I hate him so much. <laughs> And then it looks like the three banner units are Eustace Kid, Capone Beeg? What the fuck is this? Beige. Name? Capone, beige. Capone. Capone Beige. My favorite uh, family man. And X Drake. Oh, well, say, let's say the last one again. Last one is X Drake. Oh, X Drake, okay. Yeah, those I like are the three non limited banner units. And then, of course, like we said, the limited is uh, Zora Juro. And there's also a uh, Blackbeard and Luffy somewhere around here. And, and um, Law, right? Well, the Law already exists. I think it's just... The, all three of those units already exist. 
Mm, I think they're okay. all farmable as well. I, I don't know that the law is farmable. I might be wrong about the law. I believe the, the law is, is a you get for free from a banner because they they give you a ticket and then you can just pull this law and you have them. You just get them. Yeah, I think so. Uh, I, I know the Luffy that. is farmable and the the Blackbeard is also farmable and they're already in the game, so it might just be for for visuals on the cover. Hmm. All right. Because they they do do that like pretty often well they'll have older units on the cover just as like a celebration type thing mm -hmm. uh so yeah that's the worst generation so obviously zen you have the feeling of the worst generation which is you like zoro a whole bunch correct i like zoro a lot he's like the coolest character from one piece and it's not even close and uh so i'm probably gonna try to get him because <laughs> he's fucking dope yeah yeah for sure um, this is now. This is someone coming in. I'm finally going to give you the one pet. I don't know how much in your show is One Piece love. I'm going to assume there's zero. Absolutely none. Absolutely none. All right. Then we're going to start this off amazingly by saying I don't understand why they picked the worst generation <laughs> as a. <laughs> well, when Zoro got revealed, everyone thought for sure that it, it was, was going to be a Wano. Yeah. So uh, he, even I know, even I know what that is, and uh, it was not that. Yeah. So here's my best way of describing the worst generation as someone who loves at least half the members of worst generation. Uh, half of these dudes are glorified jobbers, and the other half are characters that have not done anything, and the others are L Luffy and Zoro. <laughs> And Kid, I guess. No, and Law. No, Kid is a jobber, but it is maybe the weirdest event to pick from them because it's like Blackbeard is one of those dudes in One Piece who has done two moves and then has dipped out for over 700 chapters. So... Oh, good. Yeah, so he showed up. He was like, I'm super powerful now. Bye, Luffy. And then he fucking flies off and he's gone. And it's like, oh, damn. Now we have to fight Blackbeard. It's like, it's one of those dudes where power scalers go, okay, he's done two things. Let's power scale him now. <laughs> we don't know what the fuck. <laughs> We've never seen him do literally anything other than talk about how strong he is. Yeah, Time that's to scale him. Exactly. Um, Beige, I really like. He's in, he was in Cake Island. He's the dude who can, he's basically a giant fortress, so all his armies are basically inside him. He's like a giant fortress mech man. Uh, he's really cool. He mainly just shoots people and he shoots giant cannonballs at his stomach. That's cool. Jewelry Bonnie, I like a whole bunch, even though I think her ability is just turning young or old and then eating pizza. Uh, X-Drake, you can't look from him here, so I'm kind of interested to see of him. Just looking at X-Drake, what do you think his power is? Based off of nothing oh else. God. Okay, uh... I was gonna say he definitely looks like a very loud, annoying kind of guy, but everyone in One Piece looks like that. Yeah, fair enough. Um, I don't know, man. Is he just, like, a good sword boy? Like, he, he knows how to use weapons good? All right, so here's his power. He turns into a Tyrannosaurus Rex. So <laughs> that right. is... I like him now. Yeah, he turns into a giant dino, which I kind of hope uh, One Piece does, because that's my favorite part about X-Drake, is that he just turns into a giant fucking dinosaur. And, I like him now. Yeah. Scratch Man Apu, you can look at his fucking deformed face, his horrible fucking... This is the One Piece character that I think, when you think of One Piece, and everyone goes, no, that's not One Piece, this is that character that is One Piece to you. He is the most <laughs> annoying man in the world, the most annoying fucking power fruit, uh, which I'm glad that you said he's... Piano funny. Keys? Is that what I'm looking at? The guy with the teeth, yeah, the piano teeth man, uh... Scratch Man Apu. Maybe it's just because of his design and the fact that he's just musically based that I hate him so much. I don't understand why I hate him. I think in terms of these characters, he's the dude I hate the most. Um, he's not... So he doesn't get... like. I guess the title Worst Generation is very good because half these characters feel like the worst dudes in the world. It's one of those things that I think in the manga when they gave it to him, they were like, oh yeah. It's kind of like the big three in my hero except for what if they just constantly lost that's, that's the how big it, three in my hero do constantly lose yeah imagine that but way worse like you rose last time i saw him he got his ass beat by kaido 
and then he was just kind of left for dead, and I have not seen him since, like, 200 chapters ago. Uh, Basil Hawkins, I also fucking hate so much. It might be just because of the way he looks, though. I think his powers are perfectly fine. He's like a voodoo man who can make other people die for him instead of him himself dying. Kid is Magneto, except for if Magneto lost all the time. So... And Law is Law, where Law constantly gets saved by Luffy and everyone goes, this is the coolest character in the world. How come he can't win anything? That's kind of what he's unfortunately become. He's one of those dudes that you badly want to see win one fight. But he really never does. So this is all for me to say. This is... This is a very weird celebration for One Piece. This is, I would not personally pick Worst Generation as a theme, but I'm going to assume they picked it because there's just so many characters for it, right? Probably, or, I mean, we all know they're going to do every single One Piece arc as its own thing, so maybe there's, like, time to make One Piece money. I guess, but at the same time, like, I think they should have gone with Wano. Because then I would have been able to finally fucking have a Brooks in this game. My giant skeleton man with an afro does not have a character in this game. Yeah, he does. He does? Am I wrong? I thought there, for sure there was no Brooks. There's a skeleton man. But I don't know if... Is there more than one skeleton man in One Piece? I want to say Brooks is the only one as far as I'm aware of. Hang on, hang on, hang on. He has like a little tiny... I'm 99.9% sure that there is one in this game. Hmm... B R O O K, right? Yes. Oh yeah, yeah. He was in the uh, anniversary. He was free. They gave him out for logging in during the anniversary. Okay then. Statement rescinded. But I still feel like they could have done Wano because there's like Wano Brook, Wano. Ro- and it's. I think the person I was thinking of is that there's no five star Nami. Is actually what I was going to say. Because all we have that is, a- is true. Yeah, there's. It's a. She's a four star for some reason. Yeah, uh, she's a four star. I think Nico Robbins in here. But in general, yes, she is. I think you could have maybe themed it a little bit better. I feel like if they had done Worst Generation right when they were announced, when everyone was like, oh shit, these guys are the dudes that are going to fuck up the sea, and not the dudes who they are currently in the manga, which is the dudes that got fucked up by the sea. <laughs> I, would, <laughs> I would be a little bit more excited. Like Out of all of them here, I think the ones who have done the best is somehow Luffy, Zoro, and fucking Beige. The Capone looking guy. <laughs> the Al Capone looking guy. <laughs> I like that guy. He's cool. I love I love Capone. That's where I'm also kind of like I actually really do like a lot of the characters in Worst Generation. It's just that uh, I would have preferred just Bonnie, Beige, Extrake, Kid, Law, Zoro, Luffy, and then you can kind of forget the rest. And then, (laughs) just because they haven't really done much, Blackbeard hasn't done anything post 700 chapters. Uroj, I cannot remember the last thing he did besides lose. Uh, Basil Hawkins is Basil Hawkins, and Scratchman Apu, just no no big fan for me personally. But yeah, that's my feelings on it. I can't believe the first One Piece thing is is like me actively saying the thing I don't like about One Piece. (laughs) Which is this celebration? Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all. It's true. It's because I want better from it because of how many cool th- characters are in it. I like the idea of a Wano celebration would have been awesome, especially since that's what they've been doing for the past two hundred chapters or so. But actually, how is Zoro now that we're talking about uh, the specific unit? Since he's the limited and he's the one that most people are going to be going for, how do you feel about him? Let me pull him up right quick. Hockey coated blade. Mm-hmm. I find it's like Hakai. Him. But I actually don't know. I haven't watched anime One Piece for the same reason anyone wouldn't watch <laughs> One Piece. Fair. Uh, let's see. His ultimate seems pretty strong. It's at max, it's five hundred and ten percent. And mm. then if the enemy is balanced, it's an additional forty. So it's five fifty if the enemy is the balance class, which is pretty cool. Yeah, uh, it then does 10,000 fixed to all enemies. So if you're like doing an AoE fight, you get a flat 10,000 on everyone. And uh-huh. then uh, for two turns, he gets a 10% attack and a 10% ultimate attack buff on himself. Mm-hmm. That sounds pretty, pretty good. good. I like it. Yeah, his his uh, buddy skill is 
He turns every blue bubble into a yellow bubble for three turns. He does 3,800 bleeding damage. Uh, while the target is afflict afflicted by bleed, if you connect one or more bubbles with this unit's buddy that are the same as their own color, at the end of that turn, afflict an additional 19,000 damage. Pretty good. So that's 57,000 from that. Wow. Plus, you turn all the blues to yellow. It's not too bad. I don't think it's amazing, but I don't think it's bad. It's the same as uh, Princess Shirahoshi or uh, Rengoku. They have the same thing, but with burn and ice. And now mm. so he has it for bleed now, um, mm. which is cool. And then his passive ability is reduce curse turns by three, which means whoever the, the boss is, which I guess is the voodoo guy, he's definitely going to have curse. Yeah. Because it's always how this works. These ones beat the guy that has the. They have. They're immune to the debuff that uh. They that beats them. Yeah. 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 And then uh, boost his ultimate attack damage by eighteen percent, just as a flat buff. And uh, before his turn, convert a total of four red, green, blue, or heart bubbles into yellow. So basically, you get four of his color, uh, just from him coming into the match, and then uh, an eighteen percent flat ultimate buff, just for existing. Pretty good. Yeah, it's not bad. I would definitely be interested in having him if it didn't look like they're also bringing back Princess Shiroki and uh, the giant mermaid woman. So I'll probably end up be going for her. I'll end up going for her. Oh, uh, Shira, Shira, what's her name? Shira Hoshi? Yeah, yeah. The, yeah, she's I, good. I like her. I have her too. Yeah, that was the character that almost made me want to start up Jabuti when she was announced. Because it was like for Valentine's Day, and now I kind of regret it because I also lost all the We Can't Study girls as well. So now I just feel like, ah, oh, damn it, I started at the wrong oh, that's time. Not... Yeah, that's a shame. It was literally like, well, they're not gonna drop all the female characters I like in one go, and they fucking did. They <laughs> absolutely will. They absolutely fucking will. Yeah, it was pretty brutal. Uh, I also forgot that one of the other dudes from Worst Generation, who is not actually represented here, is uh. Kill, like, I think his name is Killer. The dude in the mask that is in the celebration here, does he not have a unit to go with it? Dude I know in the he, mask. Yeah, on if you the look, cover? Yeah, if you look in, at Luffy's hat. Oh, in the the guy behind Luffy. Yeah. Does he, does he uh, not have a unit? Name? I think his name is Killer. Like, I just remember him as um, Kid's buddy. Because <laughs> uh, he's his. He's he does not his appear Jizuru. to have a unit currently. Really? That's weird. He's part of the worst generation. Um, it's weird that they have basically what looks like a little dude for him, but they don't actually have a unit for him. That makes me feel like they're might might... here at some point, like a fight or something. Yeah. Hmm. We'll see. Maybe they'll they re really are going to be having like a part two, and they'll, they'll have more worst generation dudes because obviously because you know there's a time skip. There's two different versions of all these characters. Even though I think some of them haven't really changed much in the two years difference. Blackbeard looks completely different in two years. He got fatter and got, like, uglier somehow. Wasn't his whole thing that he was already just fat? Yeah, he was fat and ugly, and then they made him fatter and uglier to show, because that's the way um, Oda likes to depict evil, is the fatter and <laughs> uglier you are, the more evil you are. <laughs> Fair enough. The Disney strategy, I like it. Yeah. That's the same reason. The the hotter your character is, the, the more chance you are of having a, a a good guy moment somewhere down the line. Funny enough, a, a Beige is the only fat guy I think in One Piece who is not a complete evil de a dick. He's like a very nice family man. He shot a rocket launcher at a man because they threatened his family. It was like pretty that. sick. He's got the Fast and the Furious thing going on. Yeah, Be Beige is basically the Dom Toretto of One Piece. <laughs> of He's One Piece. <laughs> Instead of fucking cars on a ship. Ah, oh, that made me like Beige so much more thinking of a love like Dom. <laughs> it's it's a working man's Dom. He's finally a Dom that I can respect because he's not, not very fit. Uh and he's fat. That's all I need. Uh, working man. The, 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 the working man's family man. He's like Fred Flintstone. Of the sea and Dom put together. There you go. Fred Flintstone and Dom mixed together. <laughs> the the fusion. You put pulverization and you get the <laughs> ultimate family man in beige. I don't have friends. I have family. 
capiche because he's also Italian, I think, somehow. <laughs> he's a mobster? He is a mobster. I think he actually does eat a big old plate of spaghetti at one point. <laughs> Man, One fuck, piece love... sounds like the dumbest shit ever. Oh, it's so good though. <laughs> I love it so much. Stupid. This Italian man says, "I do it for my family," and he shoots a rocket launcher at someone's face. <laughs> boy, <laughs> blank. <laughs> oh, I love it so much. And then he turns into like a fifty-foot fucking table. <laughs> Ah, oh, I would love it if they have that version of Beige, but I guess we'll have, you know, you gotta <laughs> save it for more. Gotta keep all the hypeness for later. Yeah, you gotta, <laughs> gotta have some more releases down the line, that's right. You can't drop oh. it all at once. The PvP ain't ready when giant fucking Fortress Beige comes out. He's gonna be number one in the chart, limited. What's the what's the LR version of LRs uh, and Jupiter? He's gonna be a Muso, just giant, <laughs> giant tank giant. Beige. The most hyped characters, the first Hokage, Super Vegito, Bay. <laughs> like, I don't want him now, though, if he's just like a spaghetti munching fucking... Well, yeah, he is, he is kind of like, <laughs> eats the ravioli, yo, what up, everyone, and he fucking gets shit done. He's the only, I think, pirate who has ever attempted an actual assassination in One Piece. <laughs> He's the only one who has ever tried to be smart on the ocean, like uh, like an actual pirate should be, as opposed to just going, I'm going to sail the seas. Aw, yeah. I'm going to oh, find the one you gotta, Sometimes you got to sail the seas, man, you know? That's true. That's true. And speaking of sailing the seas, let's actually talk about the PvP meta now. So this is actually kind of interesting yeah. because where I'm at at the game, the PvP meta is, I assume, extremely different from what you're dealing with on a constant basis. Because uh, I'm in, like, floor... Because you're probably dealing with the point where there's not really a meta yet. No, yeah, I'm, like, in floor 11 or so. So... Yeah, so, so PvP in this game is basically divided up into two things. There's, like, climbing the tower, which is getting to floor 25, and then there's post-floor 25, which is where you actually get ranked. Mm. So to even get on the ranking board, you have to get to floor 25. Uh, after that, you start getting, like, your ranking and all that stuff, like, how you match up against stuff. And that's where you start hitting the the formatted and built-out teams. That's why I always tell people, don't stress too much about PvP if you're brand new, because you, you really gotta build to it. It comes over time, you know? Mm -hmm. You can't just be like, I'm gonna play PvP now at 425. You just get absolutely blasted. Um, but generally, PvP team building, it always kind of goes the same way, right? You've always got, like, your leader who is usually a double tapper who gets an extra turn just because there's not a good reason not to want to have an extra turn on the first turn of the game. That's true. And you always spend that turn setting up. So like I use Hydeo as mine, but you can you know use Goku, Vegeta, Naruto, Sasuke or whatever. A lot of people use uh, Luffy and Ace as theirs. Mm. Um, He's also going to be all on that things. limited banner coming up for me too. Is he is he going to be on his own or is it like a here's all the One Piece limited? It's like a, all a bunch of One Piece limiteds on one side and then the other side is another. So I think it's Ace and Luffy and Princess, and I think two others. And then on there's another gotcha where there's like the other four in the game that are in there, like Shanks and all the other dudes, uh, Whitebeard. Oh, I don't love those kind of banners. I would rather just wait for the ones that have them solo all on there. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. because if it's solo, when you do the nine multis, you just get them. Right, mm -hmm. like if you're if the banner is just Ace and Luffy, and you do your nine multis, you're gonna get Ace and Luffy. That's that's what happens. In the ones where it's all of them, it's usually like fewer multis. It's like seven multis, but you just get one of the four. Oh, I see. As your yeah, as your uh, guaranteed, and it's not like you get a ticket where you can pick one or anything like that. It's just on your seventh multi, you'll get one of the four listed, and I'm I'm not about that. All right. Fair enough. Uh, sorry Ace for and Luffy that. is super good, so if you guys get them in this celebration, uh, enjoy. They're the only double tapper that I don't have, and they're super good. Ooh, nice. Their their passive is the uh, on the first turn. So w when you have them in the the way that PvP works is each like character is one turn, right? So mm -hmm. the second character is turn two. 
Well, with Ace and Luffy, it's on the first turn. So when you have them in the front slot, they turn every heart bubble into a rainbow. Wow, what? (laughs) That sounds crazy. Yeah, they turn every heart bubble into a rainbow. And when their health is full, which it's going to be because it's the very beginning of the game. So nobody's done any damage yet. Uh, they get to tap one additional time. So they get to use all of their assists, and they get to pop twice. That's crazy. Yep, so it's really easy to set the board up with them. Uh, I don't have them, so I use High Dio, who, mm-hmm. instead of doing that, he uh, he has a smaller threshold to make supers mm-hmm. when he pops bubbles. So I think, yeah, his is like minus one, so it's like five and, or six instead of uh, seven. Actually, it might be minus two. Look at that. Uh, yeah, reduce the requirement to the number of skill bubbles to create a skill bubble by two. And then double tap. So Dio makes a skill bubble at five. And then I also run an assist on him that lowers it again. So I get assist bubbles at four. Or skill bubbles at four, I mean. Mm-hmm. Which makes it a lot easier to guarantee that I get two on the board. Because, again, the first turn is always a setup turn, right? Yeah. Uh, but for people who also... <laughs> Wow, I just realized they're dropping a lot of really good PvP stuff back to back. That Tanjiro banner, the the birthday banner for him, if you got him on that, congratulations, because he is part of what matters in the second slot. The second slot of a PvP team is always a damage over time buff, or like debuff right there, right? So most people, you'll use like Tanjiro. Uh, I use adult Toshiro, the the completed Bankai Toshiro. Mm -hmm. Um, They're both pretty much the same character. What they do is they just do a good amount of damage. Like, Toshiro does 500% as his attack. Then he hits Freeze for three turns. And then the Freeze starts at 15,200. And then the next turn, it's 15,200 plus 4,800. Then the last turn, it's 15,200 plus 4,800 plus 4,800. So the, the debuff gets a little bit stronger. And Tanjiro mm-hmm. does roughly the same thing. Um... And so you set that as just additional passive damage. Some teams don't do that. Like, some people have started running Kinikuman, because he's a, a bonus unit right now. Uh, and then he has the he has the bleed thing. So, like, the passive that Zoro has, uh, where it puts that bleed on, uh, Kinikuman gets that out of his ultimate. So when he hits you with his ult, you get that bleed status effect. So it's the same thing. Uh, or people will use the limited Yuno from Black Clover, who does Cyclone. Mm-hmm. which is a different kind of a uh, debuff. And then what Cyclone does for you know it's uh, when the target is afflicted by Cyclone, afflict additional damage each turn equal to the number of bubbles popped with this unit during the turn times two, uh, 220. So for every bubble that you pop, it's 220 additional damage, which can stack up to some pretty good damage. Funny or after that, that, you can... Yeah, the other debuff say, that you can slap in... Go ahead. No, I was going to say, the way you're currently describing how you kind of set up, I find funny enough, just like, I figured out that was kind of the way to do it just through intuition. I was like, okay, first turn, set up everything for number two, and then my number two, who is Kanikuman, does all the stuff you're saying, where he's like, oh yeah, I have to apply this debuff in order for, it, you know, to get them into the third round. I haven't figured out what goes to third and fourth since then, but it is nice to know that I at least figured out, like, okay, so this is kind of how you go for the game set up turn one, turn two, do a lot of damage. So what do you do on turn three? So turn three uh, is kind of the freest slot when you're building a PvP team. Uh, you have a lot of options, right? So some people will do it just a damage dealer, right? Just a flat smack them in the face with as much damage as I can do. A lot of people will use, like, uh, Mugetsu, Ichigo, pretty much just anyone with a strong ult right there. Uh, personally, what I like to do is I use... Um, Tezuka from the Prince of Tennis, because what he does is when he ults, uh, he steals the enemy's strongest attack buff and puts it on himself. So, like, if the enemy has an 80% attack buff on them, Tezuka will ult them, and then they'll lose the 80%, and I'll gain it. So, like, it's a net swap of 160%. Uh, Or you can put in someone like Endeavor. Endeavor is really irritating in this game, because he takes away both an attack buff and an ultimate damage buff. So he can knock off, like, your 80% attack buff that you have on, and he can knock off, like, one of the 40% alt buffs that a lot of people will use. Um, But the third slot is kind of freeform. You can kind of just do whatever you want with it. I've seen Mm -hmm. some people stack, like, um, the buff removers, like, you know, Tezuka, like like I just talked about. 
Kenshin's master from Roroni Kenshin, Seijiro Hiko, does the same thing. Uh, the yellow version of Suna from Hitman Reborn does the same thing, but he does it with an alt buff instead of an attack buff. Um, you can do a cleanser like Endeavor. You can do raw damage. I've seen people do a second debuff there. I don't like that because the debuffs usually take three turns to hit max potency. So if you put them in the third slot, it won't get there in time. Mm. It'll only do it'll only do two turns. It'll do the initial turn that it was applied and the second turn, but it it won't be like hit the max damage that it can do. And uh, I've also just seen people go, yeah, fat fat damage right there for as much as they can get. And then the last slot is kind of pigeonholed into fat damage uh, with a caveat based on how your team is built. Uh, there are units in this game. Do you know what the status ail- uh, ailment weakening does? Uh, I think it lowers your attack a little bit. No, it's way better than that. Whatever percentage the weakening is, it increases the amount of damage that you take by that amount. Jesus. That's so if you're, if you're if you're if you're forty percent weakened, you'll take forty percent additional damage. Now, there's not a ton of characters that set weakening super well. Like some people will use a legend summon to do that. Because there's a pretty good one that that weakens, or uh, a couple characters are starting to get buddy skills that inflict weakening. Like Ultimate Gohan's buddy skill does a thirty percent weaken at twelve when he uses it. Uh, but there also are uh, buddy skills on units that do that for the the dots. So like Yurichi from Demon Slayer gives I think a thirty two percent weakening to fire. So when Tanjiro's burn go, yeah, it's 32% burn weakening. So when Tanjiro's last turn of his burn, when it's at max damage goes off, it's doing 30% more damage because of the buff from Yurichi. And then the recent, um, the final attack Kenshin that just came out during the Kenshin thing mm-hmm. does the same thing for Ice. So you used him for uh, Toshiro. That way you're getting a giant damage hit on the last turn and you're getting the max damage you can possibly shrug out of your debuff. Uh, and then there's one last thing that a lot of people do in the last slot. It's what I do personally with my team. Um, there's something called reversal damage in this game, and not that many units have it. Very few units do it, um, and it's not that good in PvE. So it's really only kind of a PvP thing. Uh, but what it does is, let's say your attack does 40% reversal, right? Well, that means it's doing 40% of the difference between your current health and your maximum health. Uh-huh. So basically, you you subtract whatever like whatever the damage is that you're missing from your full life bar. 40% of that is added to the damage that you're doing. It sounds like a lot. It never gets that high in PvP, right? So like 40% is almost always the PvE number, but health bars are kind of low in PvE, right? It's like a 10k heal in PvE is pretty good. So you don't get a whole lot of damage out of it, which is why it's not that good. But in PvP, your health bar is like 1.2 million, right? Yeah. So usually in PvP, it's scaled down to 5%. But still, 5% additional damage from like 1.1 million is a decent chunk of of added damage. Yeah, for Uh, sure. And I, I run a character that uses that in the back. I usually use either the... The Slayer Mark Giyu from Demon Slayer, the, the water dude, yeah, he's yeah. got it. Or I'll use um, Kagayama and Hinata from Haikyuu, because they've also got it. Okay. There's a couple other characters that have it. Jorno is the one that's the most common, because he's the oldest one. I think he I think he might be the very first guy that ever had it. Uh, it was before I played, when he came out. But mm. he, he certainly feels like the oldest, because he's got the lowest multiplier on his. And then uh, also... Is that the reason why the... you're not using Jorno? <laughs> Yes, <laughs> because it's just, he's just inferior. There's not really a reason to do it. Fair enough. Um, and then the other one that has it is uh, Super Mode Kur- Emperor Time. That's what it's called. Emperor Time Kurapika. He has it as well. All right. And that makes one of each color that has it, because Kurapika's red, uh, the, the Haikyuu boys are green, Giyu is blue, and Giorno is yellow. Hmm. Well, it's good to know how to kind of build up the other two. But yeah, the early goings on for PvP has been nice, is trying to figure out exactly what works, what doesn't. I'm finally at the point where I'm no longer just instant winning with Kaniku Man on turn two, and now I'm actually reaching to turn three and four, and I'm kind of like, oh, I didn't actually expect to make it this far. <laughs> what do I do now? 
So how many, so in where you're at, does it usually go to turn four or does it stop at a specific point? Like, I, uh, well, it depends on what kind of match you take, right? So if, like, if I take the, the random one, which is just mm-hmm. all the unknowns, it generally always goes to turn four unless I just get, like, lucky, right? But if it's ones where I can pick the opponent and usually a lot of people run Tanjiro second because he was just the very first guy that, that was like the PvP god because of his debuff, you know? Yeah. Uh, but I run Toshiro, who has type advantage. So a lot of times I can knock out like 80% of a life bar if I hit a red with Toshiro on the second Jesus. slot. So a lot of my games will usually end on turn three. Uh, if they don't end on turn three, then it's probably like a coin flip that I'm going to lose because oh. everyone has that reversal damage in the back. Yeah. And I I have both done and received over a million damage just on the last turn. Just the last guy. <laughs> It's it's pretty crazy when you start getting into endgame PvP where it's like, okay, I just played this entire match perfectly across three characters. I have 80% of my life bar. He's about to die. Oh, he did 1.7 million damage to me. <laughs> and that's game over because at that point when you both reach zero, it depends on uh, who won the coin flip at the beginning. No. Uh, so when you both hit zero, it actually tracks overkill. Really? Oh man, this entire time I thought yeah. it was based off of coin flip. No, no, it tracks the overkill. So like if you overkill, if we both overkill each other, but I overkill you by 400,000 and you overkill me by 200,000, I will win. All right, fair enough. Okay, that changes everything. Cuz I was thinking like, oh man, every time I've gone in second, I've been trying to win <laughs> without reaching zero cuz I thought it would just automatically lose. So it's good to know that it's over damage. It might just be that I was unlucky in every single game I won and why over I lost by over damage. I also went second. So it ended up making me think that way. But, man. That makes sense. So yeah, that's how the PvP meta is. Well, next time we do an episode, we'll probably talk more about... You know, because obviously Zoro is coming out and I'm kind of interested to see how Zoro does if you run into him and see how he's doing and stuff like that. Uh, but right now we can he, at least... He's definitely going to get used because they always make the new guys bonus units for the week yeah. that they're out. Um, he's actually, he's got an interesting gimmick that you could do in the third slot that some people do. I don't usually do it because I don't think the swing is high enough, but there, there's decent merit to it. Like, I see people do it with, uh, like, Super Vegito a mm-hmm. lot of the time. They'll do it. Uh, you put a character third that just gives good buffs to himself. So Zoro giving himself that 10% attack and the 10% ultimate means that whoever comes after him is going to get it too. So it's like a flat 20% buff. And those guys also have really strong ultimates usually because they're but the buff's not that big. Yeah. So you could, he, he definitely has a place as doing like really high damage plus leaving a buff behind when he goes. So there, there's definitely people that are going to use him a hundred percent. Right. But yeah, we'll talk more about it next week. It's just unfortunate the, the no, actually not unfortunate. Just the timing we had for when we decided to record it was literally on the maintenance day of Zoro's release. Yeah, all, it's maintenance for Zoro, yeah, yeah. And we'll definitely do more of these because I enjoy talking to Zenrod about a game that we both play, that we both actually like. Yeah, that is yeah. nice. Yeah, it's very nice. Uh, but yeah, and hopefully by then I'll make it pretty close to 25. I think what ends up what's end up going to happen is that I'm going to hit a wall somewhere around 20 because I feel like I'm already hitting with those ran like I used to be able to beat those random dudes pretty easily, and now I'm starting to get into turn four style of like, oh no, these dudes are doing way more damage to me now, and they're doing things like suddenly they have like seven. Somehow they have seven of the little uh, ultimates on the field somehow, and I barely have two. Like, I don't... Yeah. So that's usually what happens in PvP is, like, you'll you'll go on a streak, you'll hit a wall, and you're like, what the hell? And then you'll work at it, and you'll pull some better units, and then you're like, oh, I get right over this wall, and then you'll smack into another wall. Up until mm. the, the initial time getting from 24 to 25 for me sucked. I felt like I would win two games and then I would lose two games. And so my point game would be like plus 40 at the end of the day after everything. Uh, but once you get over that wall and you hit 25, it's usually pretty smooth for a while. Um, PvP rewards, a lot of people talk about, is PvP worth it? And that's a legitimate question in this game because not really. Um, really? You should, you should always finish it once. 
The problem is you don't uh, get floor completion rewards once you get them one time. So once the first time you get to floor 25, you never get a floor completion reward ever again. Uh, yeah. So that kind of sucks. Because the floor completion rewards are legitimately pretty good. Like, the first time you get to 25, you get a jewel of every color. And just in case a viewer doesn't know, what the jewels do is they are basically like uh, Grand Kai's, right? So like a red jewel increases your ultimate level. A blue jewel increases the strength of your buddy skill. And a uh, green jewel increases your passive ability by one. So they're really good, and they're like important to get. And uh, it would be pretty cool if PvP let you get like one, at least one every month, right? But you, you only get the one, the one time from it. Mm -hmm. uh, which kind of sucks. It's not that big of a deal. Because it is nice you get it at all. But then really all you get after uh, you start hitting 25 consistently is you get just those PvP shop spending points. Mm -hmm. And those are both good and kind of bad. So you get units from it. They have like PvP specific units. The shop's the only way to get them. But they're all only okay. Like Soy Fallen is pretty good, but a lot of them are just kind of like, eh, whatever. Um, I and that's then you can Terry also Man get... From Ganicka Man. Yeah. Where Starjun is from Toriko, and I got him even though he's not all that great just because of who it is. Fair enough. Um, it's the reason I yeah. want Terry, man. <laughs> exactly. Um, or you can get like legend summons that are locked behind events. So that's the appeal of like the PvP shop to me is that it's anything that was in an event and is now locked out usually gets put into the PvP shop. So you don't have to sit around and wait for reruns. You can just try to get it out of the shop. Uh, but it's because it's random, it's really tedious and annoying to max something out that way. Yeah, it, yeah. It's not like, uh, oh, I'm going to go in here and buy some level up mats for this legend summon. It's, I'm going to go in here and refresh the shop over and over and over again, and hopefully I will get a mat for this legend summon that I want. So it, it's kind of annoying. I enjoy PvP, like just playing it. Like, I think it's fun. Um, mm -hmm. But a lot of people that I've talked to don't find it very fun. So give it a try. If it's not for you, maybe get to floor 25 once for the really good rewards and then don't stress about the shop. But if you find it fun, I do think it's worth it to get the stuff in the shop and, and grab it. It's a very interesting dynamic there where Jambuti is like, We've, we realize not everyone's going to have fun with this PvP, but it's okay because we have just so much PV stuff you can do. It's so, kind of the opposite of, of Ore Collection, right? Where Ore was like, PvP is where the good shit is, and yeah. everybody wanted it. Because that was where you got, like, Yoko Kurama. It was where you got a lot of good units. Like, Neuro, I think, was in there. Yeah. Misa, the, I think, was in there. One of the dudes from Hayuka, the... No, the, the volleyball? Oh, yeah, it's the uh, volleyball. Yeah, Haiku, the, yeah. Tsukushima. The fucking yeah, the was undefeatable there. wall man, as I called him. Yeah, the, <laughs> the blocker. Yeah, he was super good, too. He was insane. Um, yeah, and this was a lot of good stuff in there. PvP for this is more just like... I think it's because it's a lot whalier in this than it was in Or. It's not like whaley to the point where you're like, you better not even try to get to floor 25 if you don't spend a lot of money, but like if you want to rank super high you gotta go in, right? Mm, yeah. And so they're kind of like, the, the focus of, of jump booty is definitely um, PvE. But I think the PvP is fun. I actually have more fun with the PvP than I do the PvE, so I, I play that way more. Mm. But, uh, you know, if it's not your thing, just don't worry about it, because they're really, really not going to punish you for it not being your thing. And it is, uh, like I said, very different from the actual PvE thing, which is kind of nice, which is what I like, is that I never... It's weird, because I, every time I see one of these kinds of games, like... It's not the exact same game, kind of like, uh, you know, a Dokkan is like a, like a bubble presser kind of game. Whenever I think of PvP, I'm like, oh, that's not possible. I don't see how anyone could really, in theory, make a PvP mode with this in it. And then the way they do it, I'm like, oh, this is actually kind of smart. The way they do it, where it's like, oh yeah, this character is this turn, this character is this turn. And then it goes to the next character, and then it's like a one-on-one -on -one style uh, situation right there. Um... I think is very cool. I kind of like the build of it. I'm having fun with it right now. We'll see next week if I hit that giant wall and I'm just like, all right, everyone. So I'm now oh, all PvE. Now. <laughs> yeah. Um, one thing, yeah, I, I like that it's really different because it makes it feel kind of fresh because, you know, a lot of gacha games will be like, everything's kind of the same, you know? Legends. 
Everything's kind of the same. Yeah. Legend, Legends is real bad with that, where it's like, oh, PvE is just shitty PvP. Have fun. Yeah. Uh, PvP without the lag? Yeah, it's PvP without the lag, and also a computer that can do everything immediately without trying. Yeah, it reads your inputs um, everything. Yeah. And so I like that, uh, that this game isn't like that, and it's like, it's cool, too, that fundamentally it's the same, but the, the total way that you approach everything is totally different. I think that's very cool. Team building's different, unique. You can't take a PvE team built for PvE and go into PvP and be like, oh yeah, I'm just gonna smoke. Yeah, like, it's, no. it doesn't work that way, and it's really cool. I like that. I, I've seen some people complain about that, and like, oh, it just, you know, incentivizes people to spend more money because the good stuff they got for this mode doesn't work in this mode, but it's like, it's not that serious. Yeah, it's no, a gotcha you, game. You they, get... they want your money, man. It's not news. It's true, and this is also a gacha game that has like five million SSRs. Yeah, you... well, one thing though that's nice about this game is that dupes are like good to have because you want to get your stuff to twelve, obviously, but they're not even close to like Dokkan levels of. I hope I pull enough to unlock critical hit, and I hope I pull enough to unlock dupe double hit or whatever. Like all they are is percentage bonuses and. They're not necessary on anybody. Mm. Yeah, it's very nice. Um, and that's, I think, the first episode from Djibouti Jams. It's a hell of an episode to return. Let me Djibouti see. Jams. Oh, my it's a good name. It's a really good name. I know. We can come up with really good names when we want to. <laughs> all our, <laughs> You know, I'll give it to this. All the podcasts over the years of all the various gotchas we made have been very good names. The thing that has unfortunately stopped it is that both of us usually end up dropping it at some point. Very good names, very bad games. Well, that's our specialty. Oh, shit, that would be a great that that would be a great podcast to talk about all the gotchas we abandoned. <laughs> very good names, very bad games. A gotcha odyssey with Zenron. <laughs> very good names, very bad games. I would totally, I would make that. All right, keep an well, eye out for that, folks. That's <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, keep out for for next time. But for this inaugural episode, thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you still, especially if you watched it all, I know a lot, an hour is a lot to ask for anything to watch. Uh, you can always show appreciation by leaving a like. I'm gonna be honest. Even if you don't like this, we're still gonna make it. But I think in order to make my channel <laughs> not go defunct. You should really support it in any way you see possible <laughs> by either leaving a comment, subscribing, or fucking what's the other things you can do? Watching comment, it. Comment, like, subscribe, click the little bell so that you get notifications. Because for some reason, YouTube has decided that subscribing does not need to do that, even though that's what the word means. And it's definitely what it should, it should do. That's a conversation that's been had 11 million times, so we don't need to go down that road again. But no. it's, uh. Yeah. Support Wokey. Keep this channel happy yeah he's working then, hard in a in a burning hot attic for you people <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah the unbelievable is the ever as all of california is on fire and i have one air conditioning thing to keep me going that's all i have he's um, out here doing his absolute damnedest okay you know the the true heroes are all the people who watch my videos we're halfway into when i go god fuck it's so goddamn hot why am i doing this why am I still making this video? And the reason is, is because, of course, the support from viewers like you. PBS was right. There you go. Yeah. And then when you're done supporting me, you can go over to Zenrod. He's, he's with Shonen, uh, was it Jump and Chill? No, not Jump and Chill. Shonen, Shonen Jump and, and Chill. Chill. Shonen and Chill. Yep. Shonen and Chill. Another great ass name, by the way. Is, uh, Ocean gets all the credit for the name. Great all name. Right. We were like, what, what do we name this thing? And we were like saying a bunch of dumb stuff. And I was like, I, I don't know, man. None of them sound good. And he was like, all right, well, what about Shonen and Chill? And we are like, yes, <laughs> for doing Perfect. that. Perfect. And, and 36 episodes later, here we are still calling it that. 36 episodes and growing great, too. Uh -huh. I, the, only yeah. reason I'm, the only reason I'm not watching this is I'm really bad at keeping up with manga. <laughs> So I don't want to be going to ruin his entire <laughs> manga experience. Yeah, I'm like, oh, I already have that experience on Twitter. As you <laughs> start talking about the latest My Hero chapter before it's even fucking out for me to see, 
You're like, oh man. My bio says I am not spoiler free, so I officially have no more responsibility after that. <laughs> God damn it. I know, I just gotta before, we, before we go, because in the spirit of this being a Zenra slash Wokey uh, podcast, I have to show you the poll that I just got in uh, mm-hmm. in Star Smash. Oh, really? All right, show me. Yes. No, not that one. That's the one. That's the one I already showed you. Damn it. Yeah, that's an already good one? one. Yeah, that's the old good one. Where's the new good one? I just I just saved that shit. Where'd it go? It's fine. This is the magic of telephones, so I can just upload the screenshot again. It's true. You can. Upload it a second time. Here it is. Alright, fuck off. Alright, goodbye, everyone. <laughs> and Zenrod ended the video for you. Say goodbye, Zen. Bye, everybody. God damn you. ここへ戻る。